Hello and welcome to the Go Technology Hub 2 video tutorial series. This is episode 102 and we are going to show you how to configure the levels within Hub 2. So in episode 101 we looked at the functionality selector which is the document where we uh, record what settings are going to be used. So we can now use this document to actually set up the, the uh, configuration we want to. Now I should say it's unlikely that you're going to actually do this yourself. Um, normally the terms of the license will restrict you to a certain number of levels. However, it's worth documenting anyway. And if you are in a situation where you need to do it uh, and you have the ability to do it and the license which covers that, um, you can use this video to show you how. And like I said, otherwise it will uh, help explain the process a little bit. So if we get the uh, functionality selector up on the left, first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is actually create the different levels. So if we go into admin and level A, the first thing we do is create the level A. And as you know, in Hub 2, we've got the five level structure in there. And if you're not familiar with that, you can either have a look at the uh, user guide, which is under here, or you can go back and watch the uh, level 101 video where I kind of talk about that sort of five level structure. And we'll probably do a separate video just on the structure itself at a later date. But if you go here, you can see in the levels section, it explains exactly what those levels do. Anyway, let's go back to creating this. So if we go tutorial level A, now one of the, uh, one of the things that's in the level A, if we go back down here, is any alias options. Um, so aliases are the ability to rename certain fields. Uh, in this case, we haven't actually chosen any, but if we did want to put one in there, we would just go and select what it was. So for example, if you want to change uh, module, we add an alias for that. It would be, for example, skid. We could have that in there. Um, in this case, we're not going to want to do that. I'll just remove that in a second. So we can go in and edit that. And we'll just take that off. You can see if that's got rid of that. So we've got our level A in there. The only setting there is for aliases. Uh, if we go in now, we can create a new level B. I've just called all the levels tutorial, and they're all going to, or I will just call them all tutorial, and it's all going to be on a one to one basis. Tutorial. There's no settings here apart from sand pit setting, which is just. Uh, going to mark it as one which we uh, don't need to use uh, for production, just for testing. And if we go in, once we get down to level C, this is where some of the real settings kind of come into play. So level C is kind of the asset or facility level. So again, we'll call it tutorial and we'll say tutorial level C and the level B is going to be tutorial as well. So here's some of the settings we've got. So we do want preservation enabled um, and the settings that we chose, we chose to uh, progress it on due date. Um, there is a little description against these settings to say what they do. Um, and I did speak about them in 101 as well. For us, preservation window before is one and after is two. Storage limit. So a standard license, you've got um, 100 gigabytes uh, of storage um, per license. That might be divided differently. Um, for this one, what we'll say is we've got, uh, we'll say one or two, four uh, megabytes. So that's about a gigabyte there. If we go down here, these are some settings that we don't want. Um, they're specific to certain projects or regions or sectors. We do want to have a preservation though and procedures and EX materials. We don't want to have uh, certification grouping and we don't want to have this one either. Um, that is for compatibility with um, one of the other wood uh, internal products. So the other settings we can put here is some footer information on our digital documents. Digital documents will explain more in a subsequent video, but those are the uh, paperless way of doing certification, handovers, preservation. And you can set a standard footer at level C. So you can say, you know, I want the page number, revision, generated date. Um, so what we'll do just to make it a little bit realistic, we'll go with page number 
on the right hand side, maybe we'll go with generate a date in the center, and then on the left, we'll go some text and we'll put like um, we'll just put wood. Um, save and view, that's that. So now we can, and it's also worth noting that in everything within Hub2, uh, there's a history button there. Um, so you can see what changes have been made. So you can see that I added this a few seconds ago. Now we can add the last two levels. So first of all, we'll just go with tutorial again. And then we will go with There's not too much uh, settings at level D, just the punch list uh, or a number of punch lists. So if we wanted to set that up, we just tick on that and then we would get options to fill that information in. We don't though, so um, we'll just go save and view. And once we've saved it, we get the option to configure uh, what logos appear on documents as well. So that's control at level D. Um, so if we go back up here, you can see it's all the way back up here. You can see here the left logo. So we've got left logo. We're going to have a wood logo in there. Um, so if we just go into downloads there and put that one there. And then for the right logo, we've said it's going to be a, a client logo, which we would need to provide or you know select ourselves. Um, in this case, though, we will just use the uh, wood free dot logo, which you can see there. And then the final step is just going to be uh, creating the level ease. So in here, we'll just go and add a new level E. And again, there's uh, quite a few settings in here. So oops. Let's call it tutorial. tutorial. And again, save that. So we've chosen um, one tier punch list for ours. And again, if you want an explanation of that, if you go back to watch 101. Next is a time zone. We want to choose what the main time zone for a project is. Um, that is so that when you have history and generated dates, that they will be in the right time zone. So it won't say that you generated something. If you did it in norm during the normal working day, it won't appear as if you generated it in the middle of the night or um, very early in the morning, very late, anything like that. So it'll reflect that properly. For the uh, ITR or allocation, we'll go with on tag added and equipment type uh, status changes. Uh, that's explained here. And again, it was also in the 101 video and we'll probably do another subsequent video on the uh, equipment type to tags and the ITR mapping. We don't want Q packs, um, so we'll leave that off. We don't want that and we do want this. So that is most of the, the level set up done. However, there's a few more things we need to do. One is to configure the handovers. And then after that, we want to configure the default sign offs as well. So let's start off by configuring the handover types. So we just go add handover type and we've got our handover types here. The first one we've got is an MC DAC. Uh, so that's a mechanical completion. Discipline acceptance and that's our first handover so let's make that number one that'll appear that's that controls how it appears in the list so you can see there's a few here so we want it to be the top one in the list and we are grouping it by subsystem and discipline and we can choose the gates which we want is just one there's a few different things here we can choose to make it um a uh, multi handover so it can cover uh, se several different scopes at once and we can describe that a little bit more in a later video on handovers. Uh, we can choose whether we want walk down information in there which we do in this case. There's also an option to include one of the handovers on the front screen um, so it'll be shown on the dashboard charts so we'll choose that one there. I uh, don't want to put interim dates on um, which would just be, you know, if you want to do an interim acceptance and we are not going to use the includes exclude. So that's an option to have fields on there for what's included and what's not, ex in, what's excluded. So if we just save that one. 
So then we're in a point where we can configure the handovers themselves. I won't do that just now. Um, you've got the cover sheet and you've got the actual content uh, of the handover, uh, the, the, the sign off sheet. I won't do that just now. We'll save that for another video. So we'll go and do the other two handovers. So next we've got uh, MCC. That's mechanical completion. Put that as number two. I'll do all the subsystems and we will go just gate one for that one. And then the final one for us is going to be RFCC. Um, and obviously, uh, these are just examples and your own handover structure will probably be different. Um, there is example handover structures as well in the uh, process map. Um, and in the training courses. But if you have a look in the process map, there's some information there, depending on whether you're a greenfield or a brownfield project and what kind of things you're predominantly doing. There is uh, some handover charts in there, some certification flow charts, as we call them. Yeah, if we go down quickly, we might be able to find one. Let's see. And there's some of the brownfield. Here we go. So here's some of the greenfield uh, handover processes. Um, so you can see that uh, we've got like a an AAC, an RSU, an HOC, an FHC. So there's, there's all sorts of different things that you could do. Um, but for this one, just for this example, so that's going to be order number three. And we're grouping that system and we're going to go one and two. So one being A sheet, two being B sheet. Again, that's uh, up to you as to, to how you configure that. And I'll show how that ties into ITR classes, uh, the A's and the B's uh, later video. So we just go see it in view. And that's pretty much it now. So what we can do uh, if we go and we actually choose that project tutorial because there's only one thing in each one it will just automatically flow all the way through so it's tutorial all the way through and we can see in there we've got our uh, handovers in there and um, the uh, when you configure your handovers it automatically sets up the imports from as well so you can see those over there and also in the report lists it's automatically created the, the Skyline reports for me as well. There won't be any information in those at the moment because you need to put in your plan dates, raise some handovers and put in plan dates, but they're there. So the last thing we need to do is to uh, set up the um, default sign-offs. Um, so the default sign-offs, as I explained in 101, are basically to try and cover off as many of the ITRs as possible, or many of the deliverables as possible. You can configure these on a, an ITR by ITR basis or a, a work list by work list basis but if you put defaults in that'll cover off most of what you need to do so this is a case of going in and adding the sign-offs we need for, the, for this version of what we've configured we're just going to use the default ones and um, that we would normally recommend which would be um, completed accepted and approved so if we go So just to restate the reason why it's completed, accepted and approved is that in our actual ITR documents, in our actual checklists, if we were, uh, you know, open them at random, completed, accepted, approved, and then if we were to choose another one. So let's go down and just say D17B, open that, completed, accepted, approved. So because it's kind of standard, it's pretty much all of them use that. We want to set these up as the defaults and then they'll all as default have these. And then if we need to change individual ones, we can do. So for us, completed is a required field. We need to have that in there um, to sign it off. Someone has to have said it's been completed. Um, we also need accepted, that's a required field, but it's not actually properly complete. So we don't get credit for it. It doesn't add to the graph saying completed. It doesn't add to the report saying completed until it's gone all three of these. So it's required, required, and then complete. You can only ever have one uh, sign off, which is complete. So we go save and view. And then it's going to be a case of doing that for all of these other ones as well. So for uh, preservation work list, um, Normally what we would do is, I think it would be complete, completed, and then verified. So, so we would go with required and then complete. Complete is there for one, you can only have one of. 
um, punch this data, um, you would have normally for us, we would go cleared, which should be required, accepted, and complete. And we want to go through and do all of these, so I'll just uh, I'll just do that now. So for work pack, we'll just go with completed by, and we'll just have a single sign off of that. I'm just going to say view. For MOC, what we'll have is answered by, which is required, and then closed by, which is complete. And we might want to, even though this isn't standard for us, we might want to have, um, you know, audit by or something for a, if there was like a random audit of MOCs. And you could leave that as an optional one. So you can have an optional field after. You can have an optional field before or after any field. Um, you can't have a required after complete because complete's a final one. So we can put that in. So if people want to do anything with that, they can do. Um, so we'll just save view. And then final one, assurance tracker. Again, we'll just go with a single complete. And that's it. Our uh, uh, projects are now set up. We've got that single one set up. Um, so it's just ready to be uh, loaded with data now. Um, but we'll do that in another video. So thanks for watching.